Today is Good Friday. It's a day we do the really hard thing of turning toward and not away from suffering. If you want to follow along with me as I go over the passion story with you, uh, we're going to be studying John chapters 18 and 19. This story begins in uh, a garden near Kidron, but just prior to going into the garden with his disciples, Jesus had shared a meal with them and he had washed their feet. Following the meal, Judas had left the table. And here at the beginning of chapter 18, Judas returns with an army of soldiers. And the soldiers ask for Jesus who proclaims, I am he, I am. It's a profound answer to the soldiers search for the Nazarene because it is also a title for God. I don't know if the soldiers knew that that was a title for God, but they do recognize who Jesus is and they bow, but they also had a job to do. So as they stand, they take Jesus into custody. Peter was enraged, so enraged that he unsheathes his sword and cuts the ear off one of the soldiers. And in the gospel of John, Jesus tells Peter to put the sword away because Jesus has to drink the cup his father gives him. The soldiers take Jesus away and two of the disciples follow. One goes all the way into the court of the high priest and the other, Peter, stands just outside the gate where Peter ends up denying his fellowship with Jesus three times. Jesus' trial in the temple courts land him in the custody of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. Now, Pilate wanted nothing to do with Jesus and preferred the religious authorities handle what appeared to be a problem within the faith community. But the religious authorities didn't just want to see Jesus punished. They wanted to see him dead, which their law would not allow them to do. Pilate pressures the church and the church pressures Pilate. And through a strange marriage between the church and state, Jesus is condemned to death. He is whipped mocked, stripped, beaten, given a crown of thorns, and told to carry the cross. And unlike the image conjured in hymns like the old rugged cross, Jesus' death does not take place on a serene hill overlooking the sunset. Roman authorities killed their enemies where people could see them, and they labeled the bodies with their charge to discourage other rebellious behavior. So it is not on a winding country road that Jesus carries the cross. It is through the crowded city, which had swelled in size due to the festival of freedom. And in the Gospel of John, you'll notice Jesus has no one to help him carry the cross. He carries it in the crowds, through the chaos, on his own. He is in charge all the way. When he is hung, it is under the charge, King of the Jews. And from the cross, he does his last bit of business. His mother, his mother's sister, and Mary Magdalene are there with the beloved disciple. And while Jesus is dying, he charged the, the disciple to adopt his mother. When he sees that his family will be cared for, he drinks vinegar and gives up his life with the words, It is finished. As the sun sets, Joseph of Arimathea asks permission to remove Jesus' body so that it may be buried according to Jewish custom. Racing against the clock because the Sabbath was to begin at sundown, Joseph prepared a tomb close to the execution site. Lo and behold, Joseph's helper appears, Nicodemus, who you'll remember had all kinds of questions and hesitations about Jesus at first but now comes with everything they will need to prepare his body in a royal fashion. When their work is done, they lay Jesus in the tomb. This is the story we remember on Good Friday, and it always brings a solemn heaviness. This year is no different. As we continue to navigate the confusion and uncertainty the COVID-19 pandemic brings, it feels as if we are as close to the passion of Christ as we have ever been. Much like those first disciples, we have experienced in this season a sudden and significant shift from joy into unrest. We have experienced our own communities scatter, and we have experienced the worry that accompanies our separation. We know loneliness and pain. We have experienced loss of control and utter confusion. 
a colleague of mine put on the internet, uh, this is the lentiest Lent I ever Lented. And while it was posted as a joke, his comment also touches an important truth. We are experiencing an unprecedented degree of the same isolation and uncertainty and fear Jesus' first followers experienced. With God's help, our experience can give us a fresh insight and a fresh hope, even in this story of Jesus' death. On the day of Jesus' crucifixion, the disciples had hit the bottom of their despair. In response, they all do things they never thought they would do. The majority of them are not even mentioned in the passion story after Jesus' arrest. They went into hiding. They did not follow Jesus to the cross or stand outside the high priest's court demanding justice. They did not begin evangelizing or, or proclaiming prophecy fulfilled. And the disciples that are named in the story don't do much better. Judas betrays Jesus and the trust of his community. Peter denies knowing Jesus three times. The unnamed beloved disciple thought perhaps to be John is at the foot of the cross, but does not stay to bury Jesus. On this day, they came to the end of their courage, to the end of their understanding, to the end of their goodwill, What's more, in comparison to what we might think of as supporting characters in Jesus' ministry, they know not what to do. Whereas the soldiers bow, the crowds part, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other two Marys all stay to the bitter end and beyond. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus treat Jesus' body with the honor and respect that all bodies deserve. And so it seems that even those closest to Jesus are capable of extraordinary failure when it comes to covenant. It seems that those who might not appear to be heroes at first are actually capable of extraordinary faithfulness. All along the way, though, Jesus is Lord. Jesus witnessed to the soldiers. Jesus directed his trial. Jesus carried his own cross. Even on the cross, when the empire thinks they have divided Jesus' family, he's there putting it back together, saying, Woman, here is your son. Joseph and Nicodemus, both secret disciples and slow to show public support, were empowered in new ways as they prepared Jesus' body. Now, whether you find yourself today like a disciple, failing to get it right, because you just can't get past the isolation and fear. Or if you are like Joseph and Nicodemus who are finding a new boldness in times of duress, no matter where you find yourself, pay attention to Jesus. In him there is hope because he bound humanity to God in a new way so that there is nothing, not even death, which can separate us from God's love. We take this day to look toward instead of away from suffering, to look toward instead of away from our own failure to keep covenant, to look for opportunities to show new boldness in times of duress, and to trust that in the end, God is still God. One of the ways we look toward our hope in Christ is to share in the reproaches of Christ, the reproaches are a spiritual discipline which leads participants into darkness where disciples can process the love of God and the power of the cross. The reproaches of Christ are a series of lamentations or sorrows in which God recalls the history of his people and all the times they get it wrong. These reproaches are normally followed by a response from the people. Today, as you watch from home, I encourage you in a period of silence following each reproach to respond in spirit, my Lord and my God. Oh, my people, oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior.
I led you through the desert 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. I made you branches in my vineyard and gave you the water of salvation. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar and gall and pierced with a spear the side of your savior. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, but you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to a land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys of the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on the cross. My peace I gave, which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a servant, but you draw the sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you, but you close your hearts to guidance. I called you to go forth and bring fruit. But you cast lots for my clothing. I prayed that you all may be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen people, Israel, but you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you join heirs with them of my covenants but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, but you did not visit me. Let us pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. I hope at home this brings meaning to Jesus's sacrifice this evening. He prayed for his church long before it existed with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. Some 
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you 